don't want a daughter-in-law who can't even do her chores. Saying this, she came up to me and took away the ring I was wearing. That's... You're too tired to do the housework, aren't you? You don't even need to dress up. I'll use it for you. I didn't know why she would go to such lengths. But because she took the ring, my mother-in-law opened the door to hell herself. My name is Lori. I am 28 years old. I was born when my parents were old, so they raised me with a lot of love. But my mother passed away at the young age of 60. My father, not wanting to cause me any trouble or worry, put our house in order and moved to an assisted living facility before he turned 70. Since he lives there, I visit him regularly, but only when he is well because I don't want to worry him. I met my husband Ray at a meetup group. I was immediately attracted to Ray, who not only had a wealth of knowledge, but also amazing skills. And despite not being taken seriously because I was younger than him, I tried my best, and we ended up getting married. After we were married, things were going well and we lived happily, sharing the same roles. One day, I went for a checkup and to my delight, I found out that I was having twins. They said I have twins, I told Ray excitedly. What? Really? We don't even have any relatives with twins. When we found out I was pregnant, we were asked if any of our blood relatives had twins. What a great thing! So being the science types that we are, we both did some research on the certainty and at first we both had plenty of time to spare and had fun. Ray works for my father-in-law's company and now that we are going to have twins, he has started his succession process as well. However, while I was fine in the beginning, in the second trimester, the morning sickness got so bad that I couldn't eat, and my health deteriorated. Ray cared for me, and if I told him I couldn't eat because of the smell, he would not bring that food in the house. Ray was kind and caring, but the problem was my mother-in-law. Morning sickness is not a disease, okay? I can understand that, you know. I had relatively bad morning sickness myself. That's why it's so adorable when they grow up after birth. I see. I've been sick all morning today and honestly I just want to lie down and close my eyes. That's what I was thinking. Oh my god, are you listening to me? So that's what I'm worried about whether Ray is eating properly. Yes, my mother-in-law was visiting me not because she was concerned about her daughter-in-law's health. She was coming to bring various foods, saying that she had brought my husband's favorite foods after blaming me for being lazy and skipping housework despite my condition. I did my best to give birth to him, but he chose such a dull girl to marry, and it would have been better if she still had the ability to do housework, but she's really useless to skip even that. I'm sorry. I was suitably amused as I wanted her to end the conversation and leave already. But I'm not always free either. It's not easy for me to come here like this. Yes. I wanted her to leave as soon as possible since no one had asked her to do so in the first place. But I kept my words to myself. I'm worried about you, especially after the baby is born. So I'll come to stay and take care of you. Yes. What? I replied without thinking, but to my surprise, she said she would live here for a while after the birth and help me. No, you don't have to. We'll be fine and you have dad to take care of anyways. I immediately expressed my refusal, but my mother-in-law did not get the message. I have my husband's permission. Besides, you don't have a mother anymore. I have no choice but to help you. Or were you thinking of wasting your money on private services? No, but by ourselves as a couple. Even if you have this morning sickness? Well, that's okay. I don't need your permission. But if you can do everything properly while taking care of the twins and not disturbing Ray, who is the successor, then go take advantage of Ray again and refuse. But if your housework and childcare suck as a result, I'll ask you to leave the kids and go away. So think carefully about what you are going to do in the future. Then she smiled wryly and left. 
When Ray came home, he opened the refrigerator and checked what my mother-in-law had left behind. Oh, mother was here today. I'm sorry. Your belly is so big and you're about to give birth, so it must be hard. Yeah. Well, she seemed to be concerned about you. I'm not a child anymore, so she should just leave us alone. And besides, you can't eat even half of this right now. Oh, it's okay. It's a waste. Don't worry about it. Just eat it. I'll go take a bath. I told my mom about the smell, but I guess she's getting too old for that. I don't think she's listening to me. I'll eat in a hurry. I'm really sorry. When I got out of the bath, he had even washed the dishes properly. He had also opened all the windows in the living room and turned on the exhaust fan at its maximum setting. I'm going to take a bath too. I was really happy that he was so kind to take care of me. And my mother-in-law's words kept going around and around in my head. Ray cares for me so much. There was no way Ray would just take the children away from me and kick me out. I knew that, and I didn't want to rely on my mother-in-law, but even now, I could easily imagine Ray, who cared for me so much, pushing himself too hard at work and in his private life, and it was distressing. Ray then received a phone call from my mother-in-law, who duly confirmed my intention. Have you heard about the postpartum? You're a very caring person, and I don't think you'd be able to take a break if she were here. I'm here too, and we can hire someone, okay? But you and your mother will continue to have a parent-child relationship, and I'm sure you've heard that taking care of twins is harder than you can imagine, so I think it would be nice if she could take care of the house for me. I don't know. Well, but my mom's not that good at housework, you know. I'll ask her to do it for now, but if you need anything, just let me know. For some reason, my husband seemed more concerned about my relationship with my mother-in-law than I was. After that, I gave birth safely and I made reasonable progress while I was recovering at the hospital. However, after returning home, the speed of recovery was slow, perhaps because there was no time to rest. Raising twins was many times harder than I had imagined. When one of them would stop crying, the other would cry. Sleep was also difficult because it was impossible to breastfeed them exclusively, so we also introduced baby formula, but they didn't take it well. I tried my best to establish a rhythm, and it was good if I could sleep for two hours at a time, but really, I would sleep for about 30 minutes several times a day, and it was more like a nap than a full night's sleep. That was as it should have been. In fact, before the birth, my father-in-law fell ill. Ray had to take over for him at a moment's notice, which meant he had to spend more and more time away from home. Are you okay? I'll go get changed, okay? Ray got woken up in the middle of the night by my crying and called out to me to see how I was doing. However, Ray's face looked so tired due to having to take on work he was unfamiliar with, so I tried not to depend on him as much as possible. It was your turn to make dinner again today, wasn't it? You're a better cook than me, though. Mom's just tastes like there's too much salt. I mean, isn't Mom doing the housework for us? She says she's busy helping you, but she doesn't seem to visit Dad much. What? I thought Mom visits him a lot. Really? Then maybe I asked at the wrong time? Sure, she comes every day, but only to bring me leftover food or to be in the living room with the twins. Besides, she was regularly out of the house because of my father-in-law. I thought it was just bad timing that I was told about it, and it shouldn't be so often that my mother-in-law didn't come to visit, but I didn't have time to worry about my mother-in-law, and I never mentioned this to Ray. To begin with, when I said she was in the living room with the twins, she was just watching TV or on her phone. When I asked her to hold them for me, Hold them? I can't. They're so heavy. I'll hurt my back. She said that, and that was it. Well, can I change the other diapers so you can carry the crying one? Huh? I don't like it. It stinks, and I don't want the smell on my hands. It's your first grandchild, so you should love them. I didn't say that, but I don't want to change the diaper for anyone but my own child either. 
It's just that she sits there doing nothing but watching TV and being on her phone, and I have not been able to sit down even once since this morning. What are you having for lunch today? I want pasta. She said things like that. And not only did she not help me clean the house, but she complained. You know what? The area around the TV is very dusty. What? Yes, I know it is. You do? It's so dirty. I was afraid you were too stupid to know, and your eyes were as bad as an old man's. I don't get a decent night's sleep, and I don't have time to watch TV. With Ray hardly ever around, it is my mother in law, who doesn't even live here, who is in front of the TV all the time. If it bothered her so much, she would have thought that she should have cleaned the house. But she only complained and never helped me with the housework or childcare. I couldn't help but wonder, from my point of view, why she had come up with the idea of coming here to help out. Then one day, I had a bad feeling about my mother in law, who was clearly unhappy from the moment she arrived. Hey, you know what? I always wondered, are you cleaning the front door? It's the place that people see the most. I just don't get the feeling that you have any interest in keeping your house clean. Cleaning it? I'm sorry, I haven't really slept the last few nights. I complained about my poor health and lack of sleep, but she wouldn't listen to me. What? Are you trying to slack off again like that? No, I'm really having a hard time already. All mothers are like that, you know. You're not the only one. You're always being spoiled. I'm going to give you a little workout today. Workout? Yes, you always cook just whatever kind of food, don't you? Today, I'll show you how to make Ray's favorite boiled fish. Unboiled fish? It wasn't that I couldn't cook it. I knew it was Ray's favorite food, so before I got pregnant, I used to make it a lot. Oh, you're thinking I can make it, right? I'm saying I'll give you the taste of my home cooking, the taste Ray loves. No matter how much Ray liked it, I felt like she was taking it out on me when she chose the more labor intensive version, even though there were many others to choose from. I knew that if I complained about anything, I would just get loudly returned and abused. And since the twins were sleeping unusually well, I honestly didn't want to wake them up by making any more noise by my mother in law, even though I too wanted to sleep. Okay, we're going to make it just like this, okay? Like this? That's right, make it quickly. Then, when I was relieved that it was finally done, I felt my fatigue reach its peak, and I thought my eyes were blurry and I almost fell over. It was just dizziness, so I managed to hold on, but my hand seemed to have hit the pot, causing it to fly through the air and spill out its contents. The children, startled by the loud noise, woke up and cried loudly. At the same time, my mother in law shouted angrily. What are you doing? I missed the best part of the drama because of the noise. Peering into the kitchen, my mother in law shouted even louder. What is this? Did you just drop everything? I wanted to get to the crying twins in the living room, so I apologized to my mother in law, put the food back in the pot, and slipped aside. Fortunately, the twins were only startled by the noise and calmed down a bit when I turned on their toys. However, my mother in law, on the contrary, seemed to have lost her excitement. I don't want a daughter in law who can't even do her chores. Please don't scream so loud. You'll make them cry again. What? What? You're just incompetent and you're rebelling against me? You are totally cocky. Saying that, she came up to me and took away the ring I was wearing. That's. You're so tired, you can't even do your chores. You don't even need to dress up, so you don't need this, do you? I've always been curious about this ring because of its interesting design. I'll use it for you. I couldn't understand why she would go to such lengths. Please, give me that back. It's a gift. If I take it off, I'll be in big trouble. I pleaded. Ray gave it to you? Then you should apologize for losing it. You have to take it off in front of Ray. I thought I should just leave her to her own devices, but when she realized I wasn't going to say anything more. Right, right. If you honestly reflect on what you did, I'll pay you back someday. You are incompetent, so at least take 
what you are told seriously. If you don't do what you're told seriously and properly, I'll take my grandchildren away from you this time, not just your ring. At that moment, my mother-in-law's cell phone rang, and after checking the message, she said, You got it, right? I'm going to go visit my husband, and you're going to make sure everything is cleaned up. After packing up her belongings, my mother-in-law left. A few days later, my mother-in-law came to visit me again. She seemed to think it was just me and was surprised that Ray was there. Oh, Ray is here? Yes. I was waiting for you because I have something to say to you, mother. Oh, uh, what is it? Oh, I'm fine if you're wondering about my condition. You're so kind, Ray. I'm just trying to be supportive as long as you don't push yourself too hard. I wondered which one of us was going to say it, but Ray was more upset than I was, so I couldn't interrupt him. No, I'm not worried about you at all, and that's not what I'm going to talk about. My mother-in-law seemed a little confused by the angry attitude of the usually gentle Ray. Really? It's just, you know, it's a mother-in-law's duty to take care of her daughter-in-law, isn't it? Like the other day... She's not your daughter-in-law anymore. What? I don't want you to have anything to do with Lori, because she's not your daughter-in-law anymore. Oh, you're divorcing her? That's a good choice. She's too useless for anything. Yeah, that's right. There will be a divorce. I see. So what about the twins? I feel sorry for them if they are separated. I'm going to do my best to raise my grandchildren. I'm going to be busy. I'm sure you'll be busy. After all, you'll have to work to survive. What? Saying that, Ray presented her with a divorce decree with my father-in-law's name on it. I'm disappointed in you. My father-in-law's face appeared on the device by the table. What's the matter with you? Are you really too busy helping your daughter-in-law and taking care of your grandchildren that you won't come to visit me? But instead of helping her, you were actually bullying her. Bullying? As my mother-in-law was about to turn to the screen to argue, a loud sound with her voice played in the room, which was from the time that she had taken the ring from me. Ray questioned her. This is your voice, isn't it? I don't know. Give me the ring. I know you have it. I don't know anything about a ring. Just give me the ring. I've been monitoring you for the last hour, and I know you have it because of the GPS. GPS? You've been monitoring me for a while? My mother-in-law put her shaking hands in the bag and took out the ring she had taken from me. I know you thought this was a gift from me, but it's not from me. It's from Dad. Your father gave her the ring? Yeah, it's a prototype for the company. It's called a smart ring. If you remove the ring without following the instructions, or if you press a button on the inside, an SOS is sent to the other pair of the ring. Then it records the surrounding sounds and sends them to a server. My father-in-law spoke through the screen. I knew that my collapse had put a strain on them, you know. I was worried that something might happen to them, so I gave it to Lori as a gift, even if it was a prototype, just to feel better. Plus, I got an SOS because you took the ring, so I got worried and immediately turned on the camera that was supposed to be used to watch the twins, to see if I could figure out what was going on. So, I watched everything along the way. Oh, that's... Uh, that was different. That... What if, you know? Even if I did bully my daughter-in-law, you wouldn't have to go all the way to a divorce, would you? Don't you agree? How dare she say such a thing? Everyone here was thinking. I told you I've been monitoring you for the past few days. Besides, didn't you look at your phone that time and then disappear right away? You never made it to my dad's place, so I just kept watching. I think any husband in the world would have you divorced you if they saw this picture, don't you? Ray took out a picture of his mother entering a building with a slightly younger man, arm in arm, in good humor. This is different! This is different! Ray continued to show her a series of pictures and she kept denying it. My father-in-law added his words to match. Who would want a wife who is playing with another man at a time when he's weak and hospitalized? 
I thought it would be a bad idea to cause a scene at the hospital, so I asked them to do this for me. If you sign it now, I'll cut your alimony bill in half. Oh no! No! No, not right now! I'm not even working! You have one more week before Dad gets out of the hospital, so you'll have to make it up to him. Even you, Ray! Lori! Do you expect me to take the side of someone who has hurt me while I was having a hard time raising the twins? I also despise you with all my heart for betraying Dad. Finally realizing that she had no allies here, my mother-in-law reluctantly signed the divorce papers. I thought that the twins, Lori, Dad, you, and I could all get along happily. I can't forgive you for ruining that, and I despise you too, so please, don't ever see my family again. Finally, Ray's scornful look and firm rejection of my mother-in-law seemed to have finally pushed her over the edge, and she gently put down her pen, gathered her things, and left. I'm really sorry about this. I'll take care of the rest. I'm really sorry. To my father-in-law who apologized, I said, No, I also thought something was wrong, but I pretended not to see it. My father-in-law then hung up the video phone, saying that he was going to contact my mother-in-law to finalize some details. I couldn't bear to watch this happen while he was in such poor health. Don't push yourself too hard from now on. If you need anything, just let me know right away. Ray said kindly. Yes, I will. By the way, this prototype is amazing. I knew you made things when I met you at that meetup of people who love new electronics, but I didn't know you could make something like this. Yeah, that's right. You know that I want to be there for you when we got married and have kids, but that doesn't happen very often, does it? It's amazing how you've been able to give shape to your feelings. My dad helped me with it, though. Finally, the fuss came to an end. Later, when my father-in-law was discharged from the hospital, it became easier for Ray to take time off. He is doing his best to become a dad, even though I'm sometimes temperamental now. In addition, my father-in-law arranged for a variety of postpartum support for me, saying that he wanted me to accept this as a way of apologizing and making me feel a little better, and my health recovered quickly. My health recovered rapidly, but my mother-in-law's life seemed to have fallen into disarray. Apparently, when my father-in-law's divorce was finalized, my mother-in-law went to see her unfaithful partner. The other party was initially very nice to her. Let's pay the alimony all at once so that we can live happily together. It's for the both of us. She took those sweet words, borrowed money under her name, and paid the alimony for both of them to my father-in-law in one lump sum. However, her boyfriend soon disappeared from my mother-in-law's life, leaving her with only the debt. When my mother-in-law told my father-in-law about this story, she was chased by debt collectors and asked him to return the alimony she had paid because she was in trouble. Of course, my father-in-law was appalled and refused my mother-in-law's request, and he also asked for a restraining order against her for me, Ray the twins, and himself for the future. Later, I saw my mother-in-law once in the park. She was sitting on a bench and looked thinner and smaller. And in her line of sight, a couple about my mother-in-law's age and their two grandchildren about two years old were happily playing ball. I don't really know what my mother-in-law was thinking as she looked at that family. I just know that she left such a future behind. Lori, let's go. Yeah, let's have hot pot for dinner tonight. Well, it is getting colder these days. I would never betray the happiness of my family. I want to keep this happy family and the twins happy.